what he's doing is documenting the civilian deaths. He's not trying to document militant deaths. He's documenting because no one else will. All in all, he has gone to 60 sites. He, as well as the people's other survivors, are suffering from PTSD. I don't think that's surprising. He says that for every 10 or 15 people killed, maybe they get one militant. He puts himself at great risk because he goes in immediately and everybody that is there would like to go in immediately, but they fear the double tap. And double tap, for those of you who haven't heard about what that is, is after the first strike, then rescuers go in to drag their family members and friends from the rubble and they are hit again by another Hellfire missile. That is the policy. And that is a war crime. I mean, we all know that you don't, you know, when what we in the U.S., in the West, consider terrorists hit a van with a red cross on it, that's considered a war crime, right? Doing it from 7,000 miles away at Creech Air Force Base is no less of a war crime. Another way it violates international law is that it is... The bottom line is, is extrajudicial assassination. We are killing people without ever presenting any evidence that they have done anything wrong, without ever charging them with any crime, without ever having any proof. Um, there's no, we have no way of having a positive identification that even if these people did do something wrong, that they are who we think they are. And many times, uh, Kareem mentioned many times that, uh, so many times that uh, the United States, when they, um, we, we have a drone strike and they feel like they have to uh, report that we got somebody high up so that it, was, it wasn't in vain, and they will, they will say, that, oh, we got this guy. Uh, and, uh, and then two weeks later, another drone strike, oh, we got that man again. And he said, how many lives does one man have, we wonder? How many times can one man be killed?